Hello folks, I hope that you are having just a great, great day today. Today I'm going to take a look at the Fred Saberhagen novel Wound Healer's Story. It's the first in the Lost Swords trilogy, which is the sequel to the Complete Book of Swords. Um, after he writes the Complete Book of Swords, Fred Saberhagen writes a number of, of, of sequels that are basically taking a deep dive into one of the stories and what's been happening with it, of that sword, the swords that survived. Uh, so we'll be taking a look at that novel here in just a little bit. I just uh, read it again. Um, now, I loved, as I mentioned in the Complete Book of Swords, uh, I have loved that series. It's incredibly influential on me, that trilogy. That was the second trilogy I read. Um, that was uh, It was the second adult fantasy book I read. It was the second adult book I read. Um, and so I, I've loved it, and it was very impactful for me. It was written in, in the mid-80s. I've already reviewed for you the first trilogy. Um, and then... Um, I've, I've read it. I've reread the trilogy a few times, um, but I haven't gone back and reread it in in, in 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 about 15, 16 years or so. So I wanted to go back, reread it, um, remind myself of how good it was, and re and then bring it to your attention as a part of this video series where I go over reviews of fantasy, science fiction, and horror works. Right, um, and and then there is a sequel with with a bunch of different books in it. Um, now, the sequel, Wound Healer's Story, is, is the next sequel in it. It's the only sequel I've read. I own the next trilogy, but I've actually never read the next trilogy beyond Wound Healer's Story. And I've only read it one time, and that was longer ago. So I decided to go back and reread it, and I just finished it again today. Um, I knocked out the last 50 pages or so while I was at a local um, uh, shop at a place called Paul's Restaurant, which is down in downtown Arbutus. Uh, which is right on the same block as this movie theater that I go to that's locally owned um, where I went to go see the the, the, the R-rated criminal thriller of The Simple the Little Things. Uh, stars Denzel Washington and Jared Leto, which I liked more than the Rotten Tomatoes reviews. Uh, I thought it was a better film than that, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, but that's where I finished it up today. Um, it's only about 210 pages long in my oversized collection. Fred Saberhagen, um, like, is, is good. Um, unlike a lot of fantasy writers um, or other other genre writers, his writing does not get bigger and bigger the long farther you go along in the series, like J.K. Rowling's, uh, you know, the Harry Potter series, or Isaac Asimov's The Foundation series, where the books are like, like three or four times as big later on in the series as they are earlier on. Um, you know, even uh, the original trilogy uh, is. 625 pages long for three books. This one is like 615 pages for three books. You know, they are, they are coming in at 200 pages, plus a little bit more, and this one was 210. Um, and in, in this next trilogy, there's actually, they're actually small, a little bit smaller than 200 pages on average. Um, so in, in the second complete Lost Book of Triad, Swords Triad, so uh, Fred Saberhagen does not uh, suffer from sequelitis, which I enjoy. So you won't have to worry about spending too much time. I probably spent about six hours knocking out book four in the series, book one um, in the sequels to the original trilogy. So basically what's going to wind up happening um, in this series, it's, it's set in this post-apocalyptic fantasy world, um, sometimes referred to as Artemis world, and it's basically um, the change happened uh, which caused sort of fantasy things to happen. And while there is some old world technology like old world lanterns that you'll come across from here sometimes uh, most of the old world tech is gone um, this is thousands and thousands and thousands of years in the future uh, and so it's it's definitely a very fully fleshed out fantasy world with magic and dragons and swords uh, and that sort of a thing that's all, all happening so basically what's happening um, is, is that you have um, in, as, as introduced in the first trilogy, you have the gods have created a, a set of 12 god blades that were created by the smith Vulcan. Um, he used some help from humans to help him with the smith. Um, he will slake the blades in the human's blood. Um, one, of the, one of the humans, uh, smiths, that helps him out survives, and that's the father of our protagonist, Mark, who knows more about the swords through his father, who knows more about the swords than any other human alive. He's the only human who's ever held all 12 swords. Um, and Mark uh, and George, George gets a sword called Town Saver, um, which has some dark stuff that goes along with it, uh, which will set our hero Mark out on a journey with Town Saver. Um, over time, he'll, he'll, he'll encounter and use a number of swords in the first trilogy and a variety of big giant scaping, uh, um, uh, uh, giant uh, big picture things that are happening. Uh, as the world is changed by these various continent-rending things that are happening um, as a result of the swords setting things in motion. And now there are multiple point-of-view characters, from Derek the Quick to the bad guys, like 
um, you know, the Silver Queen and uh, the Dark Lord, the Dark One uh, that you'll follow along with. Um, there are some, you know, some politics, some wars, some battles. Um, it has an epic scale. Well, well, the first and third book have an epic scale. The second book is really just a, just, just a giant uh, Dungeons & Dragons module. And this one feels much like it's the same. It feels more like it's book two's plot line than it is like a book one or book three giant plot line. Um, so basically what's winding up happening is that it's about ten years after the end of book three. Mark is now married to the Princess Christina. He's able to marry her because we find out that he's actually the Emperor's son. And when we find that out in Book 3, um, it gives him the lineage that will allow him to marry Christina. Um, and they have a child named Adrian and, and another child as well. And Adrian is their firstborn son and he is blind and he is, uh, he will have like palsies. Um, he'll, 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 uh, and such. And so he's definitely somebody who's wounded and you know, you need to have a firstborn who is a, an able heir to the throne. So Mark and, and Adrian and Christina rather, um, work, work a lot about trying to find ways to keep their son healthy and they'll try magical means they'll try physicians they'll try a lot of different things and the white temple nobody is able to help him out and at the end of the day they realize that the only way that they're going to help him out is by finding the sword wound healer now wound healer is one of the 12 swords that were made um, one of the god forged swords and so it's a really really powerful and it will heal any 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 issue that you have uh, for example jord has his arm healed by Wound Healer that he had cut off by Vulcan and by the God, but Wound Healer will heal it. It'll regrow a new, a new limb. So basically any issue. Um, Wound Healer has shown up in a white temple far to us now. Um, and so basically the, the prince is going to set out with a, with, a, with a small group of high qualified soldiers, about 40 or so, um, as well as his best friend, Ben, who is um, the intelligence officer now for the kingdom, um, who's been with him from, from many a book who he met about three, four chapters into book two, book, book one rather, and they're going to go quest and grab the sword. He's going to take his prince uh, with him, Prince Adrian with him, so that he can heal him and then bring him back. And that's it. Quest for the sword, and that's it. You're going to go get the sword. Um, so this is a sword quest. Um, and so again, it's it's it feels more like 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 the uh, the the book two, which was a lesser a lesser sort of a, a take on what you could do with the series to my mind by Fred Saberhagen. Um, all book two is doing is you're trying to find and break into the uh, the Blue Temple's dungeons uh, and and take away their 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 nice stuff. It's it's just a quest. It's a D and D module, um, and this feels like a D and D module too. Let's go, uh, let's go to the south. Let's find the sword and let's go get my kid and healed. It feels again like a Dungeons and Dragons quest. Nothing wrong with that. It's just the stakes are lower. However, unlike book two, this one the books will increase without us knowing about it at first. And we'll follow along with some other characters. Well, Zoltan's another major character. He's one of the kids. Uh, Adrian will be a, a point of view character for a chapter. Um, we'll have point of view characters like uh, the court wizard, Baron Amentor, who's an antagonist, among others. Um, you'll have other point of view characters, although Zoltan's the other major one. He has probably just as many chapters as Mark does. And so he's, but he's the other, he's the other big, big uh, POV character in the, uh, in the, the fourth novel in the Swords series. Um, and the seventh source novel in, in the uh, Ardas World series, um, as, the, as the Book of Swords was a sequel to another trilogy um, in the world, it introduces us to the world, the Empire of the East trilogy, in the early 70s. Um, so there you are. That's Wound Healer's story. I love it. I give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, I don't think the sequel is as good as the rest of them are. Now, I don't know if I'm going to read Book 5, Sightbinder's story. I might. I might not. I finished Wound Healer's story today. My goal is to knock out a chapter or two tomorrow and get started with, with it. But... I'm, I, I try to be very, very practical in my reading and my reviews thereof. Um, I don't want to commit myself to doing something if I don't decide not to do it, right? You know, I, I, want, to, I want to be organic with this channel and go where the spirit wills, <laughs> right? Um, and so I don't want to force something. Uh, but I'll at least read a chapter or two from Sightbinder's story that I will commit to um, and knock it out. Uh, my goal is to knock it out tomorrow um, while I'm taking a bath when I normally read my things um, and get those things knocked out. Um, so and I'd like to dedicate an hour uh, a night to my reading uh, to, to doing those sorts of things. And then my channel is in addition to that sort of thing. So there you are. Have you read the book of swords? Have you heard of it? Have you heard of the next uh, wound healer story? Have you read it? If you've read it, what did you think about it? Did you agree or disagree with my take on it? I would be more than happy to engage you with it further in the comments below. If you like this video, please feel encouraged to hit that subscribe button because there's going to be a lot more of these to follow. And finally, hey, 
I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day and investing it and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives, right? And we're being pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling and I appreciate it. And thanks again. Have a great day.